Okay, so I hope um, that's given you a bit of an insight into the verbal reasoning tests and the type of uh, type of questions you can expect to face. Um, as I say, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more later about how you can prepare for these. Let's move on to everyone's favourite, the numerical reasoning tests. So um, what do they measure? Again, we've got comprehension and reasoning type tests and the format um, are either basic maths questions of the sort that you may remember from your A-level or GCSE um, type textbooks or more complex charts, tables, um, or even narrative numerical data where um, that will be what you'll face at the more, um, the more senior levels, so the, the graduate and above levels. Usually multiple choice, so at least you can um, narrow down your options a little bit. And uh, again, timing's pretty similar to the verbal, 15 to 35, up to one minute per question. Sometimes calculators are allowed, sometimes they're not, uh, but you, again, you can check this out um, as part of the administration instructions. Typically for comprehension tests, so the, the less complex ones, they say maths uh, calculators aren't allowed. Let's, um, let's have a go. So again, let's start off um, slightly easier. Have a look at the problems below. Each problem is followed by four possible answers and an X. Um, work through each problem and select which of the answers is correct and if the correct answer is not there then select X. So X is your none of the above option and again sometimes we'll do that when creating questions so that uh, so that will be the right answer and um, again we'll put some distractors in there that look right but are off by a couple of decimal points or by a certain factor. So have a go at these questions uh, one to five and choose your answer from the following options A to D for each one. I shall give you just a moment for this. You can use rough paper. Typically you're encouraged to write down your working. And this is really where your estimation skills often come in handy. OK. As this is the uh, comprehension one and we want to spend a bit more time on the reasoning examples, let's give you the answer to these quickly. So there's the answers. Uh, 17, 81, X, 0 0.945 and 1 and a quarter. Uh, the, the reason why uh, option 3 is X is because 4% um, of 30 is actually 1.2 and that answer isn't given at all there. So the right answer is to say X. It doesn't con it's not contained in the options. OK, let's um, step it up a gear. So this is the first example question around numerical reasoning. You can see that you've got uh, a table. You've got a uh, bar chart and you've got a question. If the population of Ireland grew by 10% between 2005 and 2010, how many more coffee bars were there in Ireland in 2010 than in 2005? Um, as, a, as a word of warning up front, this is a multi-stage um, question, and by that I mean you're going to need to work through multiple calculations before you arrive at the right answer. Um, so take, take a couple of minutes now just to give it a go, and then we'll debrief on the correct answer afterwards. Okay, thank you.
Okay, um, hopefully I'm not breaking your concentration by cutting back in, um, but what I thought it might be a good idea is to uh, talk through how the answer was arrived at for this question and then give you um, a little bit more time for the next option. So let's uh, talk through how this is worked out. So just to remind you of the question, the population of Ireland grew by 10% between 2005 and 2010. How many more coffee bars were there in Ireland in 2010 than in 2005? So population of Ireland in 2005 um, is 4187000. So remember the column headings will reveal important information about the scale of the number inside the box. So that's actually uh, 4,187,000. And that's given to you on the table on the left. So you need to work out what a 10% increase is. So you take that figure, times it by 1.1 uh, to give you a 10% increase, and that equals 4,605,700. Then you can move on to working out uh, the number of bars per 100,000 people in 2010, and that is 31. And you get that from the bar chart. So you can see in 2010, they've got three horizontal lines. You're looking at the green line because that's Ireland. And that goes up to uh, 31 per 100,000 people. So moving to the next stage in the calculation, the total number of bars in 2010 equals 31 times 4605700 divided by 100,000. Um, you'd actually do the 4605 700 divided by 100,000 first um, and then multiply by 31 if you remember your bod mass from um, GCSE in terms of the order in which you need to do these calculations first. That gives you a figure of 1428. You then need to work out the total number of bars in 2005 so that you can calculate the difference and that equals 28 and again where you get that from is the uh, chart on the right. You've got 2005 and you've got a horizontal green line that leads up to the number 28. Times that by the population in 2005, which you get from the table on the left, 4187000 divided by 100,000 equals 1172. Subtract one from the other and you get your difference of 256. Now, we've actually made it slightly tougher for you um, for these examples because we haven't given you the multiple choice options. You will have some multiple choice options um, up there and they will, again, be designed to, uh, uh, to throw you. So some of the answers, for example, um, might... Um, so we're talking about the population of Ireland growing by 10%. So some of the answers will be based upon the population of Ireland growing by 1% in case you get, a, get your scale wrong, or 100% even, um, although that would be quite easy to discount. So um, again, remember that you'll get some multiple choice to choose from. Okay, now I know that numerical reasoning uh, questions, a few people in the pre-questions um, said that they would like to... Um, practice these. So let's let's give you some more time on number two and then after this we'll move on to the abstract reasoning test. So have a quick go at this one. Um, you've got uh, one chart and based on the table approximately how much higher was the average monthly office rent per square meter in Dubai than in Nicosia in May 2007. Okay just a word of warning here read the wording carefully to ensure that you get the correct scale in your response and as a specific hint look at the word monthly versus the word annual okay no more hints um give it a go good luck
Okay, hello again, everyone. Um, hopefully you've uh, wrestled that particular question uh, to the ground and it's uh, submitted to your intellect. Um, if, if it was a bit of a challenge, not to worry, uh, we're going to talk through the explanation now uh, so all will become clear. So, um, based on the table, approximately how much higher was the average monthly office rent per square metre in Dubai than in Nicosia in May 2007? So in this table, you've got the country names on the left, you've got the average annual office rent per square metre in May 2008, and then you've got the change compared to May 2007 as a percentage figure. So just to help you interpret that, in Singapore, the average annual rent per square metre in May 2008 was 1500 US dollars. And the change compared to May 2007 is 86%, i.e. that's 86% higher than it was in May 2007. OK, let's have a look at the workings. So, first of all, you need to calculate the rent in May 2007 in Nicosia. So that equals the rent in May 2008 divided by 1.58. OK, and that's because uh, the change compared to May 2007 is 58% for Nicosia. This gives you a figure of 253. You then perform the same calculation for Dubai. So you take the rent in May 2008 which is 1383 and divide it by 1.43 which is the change compared to last year and this gives you a figure of 967. If you simply stop there then you're getting the annual rate and that's a, a classic problem is you get halfway through the question and you don't quite finish up with the last calculation and there will be a multiple choice answer that has um, 967 minus 253 is the correct answer. You've got to remember to divide it by 12 because the question asks what's the average monthly office rent. Do that by a simple division and you get a difference of 60 US dollars. You can see that um, it's important that you're up to speed and au fait with your percentages. So it's not just going to be something you need to practice for basic comprehension tests. You need to be really up on your um, on your basic percentages, fractions, multiplication, division, etc. The the saving grace is that for these level of questions you're typically allowed a calculator, so that's uh, going to going to help you along on that front. 